Hi guys, it's Real Mel Tan here, continuing with our Ryzen 5 T600 series. Today's topic would be, would the aftermarket cooler be necessary to power up your gaming and work experience? Should you buy it now? But first, I'd like to thank you all for the wonderful support you gave for the first Ryzen 5 T600 video, the T600 vs the Core i5 8400. If you have not watched the video, I will include a link at the end of the video. So, now let's get Gordon to walk through the process of testing an aftermarket cooler versus a stock cooler. Hi. Here, the subject of today's video would be Is it worth it to get an aftermarket cooler for your CPU rather than just use the stock cooler? So whatever is for Intel or for AMD. So for the purpose of this video, I have brought out my demo set, the Roku right over here. So let me take you through the have over here. That's an AMD Ryzen 5 3600 non-X sitting under this heatsink. This heatsink is the Cryoric H720mm cooler. Right now, you could probably get this cooler for about 65 bucks. Going right next to it, you've got 16 gigs of GSQ Sniper X 3200MHz CL16. It's not 3600 fancy RAM. This is RAM you could easily buy off the shelf. It's not clearly that expensive. And right below here, you have the AMD Radeon 5700XT. This particular card was supplied by Sapphire. Again, this is a mid to high range card. This is something that if you were to build a system like that, this is the most in your budget for balanced gaming a GPU like this will be something that you'll probably go for. And all of it is sitting on the MSI B450 Gaming Pro Carbon AC. But the whole idea was why we choose this mix of components is simply you don't see any expensive exotic uh, things like 360mm radiator or a custom loop here. You don't see a 2080 Ti down here. I stock Roku configuration. If you buy my mid-range chip, this is the default case we're going to give you. Let's get on to the test. The first test we're going to use will be Cinebench R15. So I have a screenshot here from a test I did with the R15 on the stock cooler that comes with the 3600 non-X, which is the AMD Rave Stealth. Four is 1551. With the aftermarket cooler, what I have done is I have set the clock speed to... 4.2 using Ryzen Master so you can see the clock speed has been set to 4.2 gigahertz and let's take this guy for spin and we end up with a score of 1676 and about 120 points improvement over on the stock cooler of course I think the question you're gonna ask is oh, so of course it's gonna be faster true but you also have to remember that you cannot do this 4.2 gigahertz overclock on the Rift Stealth Cooler or at the very least it's not going to be particularly safe. When I get to a later part of the benchmark, I'll show you why. Now the next benchmark that we are going to run on this CPU, again it's clocked at 4.2 GHz, would be the V-Ray CPU render benchmark itself. What is V-Ray? V-Ray is a plugin for certain design applications such as Google SketchUp, 3ds Max. It's quite a popular application among people who work in the architectural, interior design, the design industry in general. Now, I have a screenshot right over here of 1 minute 32 seconds for CPU render. Let's run the benchmark here on 4.2 GHz and let's see what the results are. So we get 1 minute 26 seconds, so grand total of 6 second difference. Quite noticeable, especially if you're going to be rendering larger projects. For the part that I think a lot of you kind of looking forward to, how does this guy perform in game? For the purpose of today's demonstration, I have decided to use a very popular racing simulator game, Forza Horizon 4. So as you can see, it's an NETP ultra setting, and the FPS that we have achieved is 151. The target is unlocked variable because I have turned VSync off. Let's get right down to the benchmark itself, to how does it run, overclock to 4.2. disappointing because the difference between clock versus overclock to 4.2 is nothing. It's still 151 FPS. Yeah, you may probably be scratching your head and wonder why. One thing to remember is when you have a configuration like this, more often than not, your bottleneck is not really the CPU itself. The bottleneck for games wise is this guy over here, the GPU. No matter how much you are going to overclock the CPU, the fact of the matter is that it's this fella that will determine the average FPS performance in games. Now you're probably asking that if I'm a gamer, what is the point of me even spending money on coolers such as the Cryo H7 for my CPU? Since an overclock isn't really gonna do any for my game performance, so why should I invest that extra money on the cooler? This is a screenshot I took of the Forza Horizon 4 benchmark running on the stock cooler itself. So you will notice that the CPU by itself 
hover a little bit over 4 gigahertz but if you come right down to here you'll see that the temperature of the cpu has already hit 68 69 around there let's see what happens with the cpu clocked at 4.2 gigahertz now your idle temperature is 51 <laughs> see right over here our benchmark is running the key thing to look at here is that even one slightly overclocked to 4.2 gigahertz your temperatures float below 60 so this is approximately about 10 degrees drop on the stock cooler it was running at about 68 69 to 70 degrees on average the h7 you are looking at about 55 60 roughly around there so what benefit is this of to you as a gamer the crux of the matter is that heat wears out uh, computer components uh, high temperatures will tend to wear things out faster for the a little bit investment that you put for this cooler you will look at this computer potentially lasting you longer before your next upgrade that's the main benefit that you are looking at higher durability better reliability especially under extended stress content creators this is even more of a worthwhile investment as you've seen from the cinebench and the v-ray benchmarks your cpu is going to be much more stressed so all the more you should get a decent cooler like this one over I hope this video has taught you something about aftermarket coolers versus stock coolers. Would you go upgrade your current PC now? Let me know in the comment sections below. If the response is good, I'll put out more Ryzen 5 3600 videos or even the Nix 3700 or 3900. In the meantime, you can watch my latest video on the Ryzen 5 3600 versus the Intel Core 8400 or check out more videos in my tech playlist. Remember to click on the i icon to subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon to know when I put up new videos. It's Rima Tan out.